Hi everyone, Raquel here from Scrap Cozy. Today I wanted to share with you an art journal spread inspired by the current topic at Paper Artsy blog, which is a vintage Christmas. This art journal has some elements that can be moved and changed around. I used all my Scrap Cozy stamp sets from the Paper Artsy Christmas release last year, ESC 07, 8 and 9, as well as one of the stencils PS 072. I also created a postcard and I used the stencil PS065, which was perfect for the back of it. This is a very long video, so maybe you want to grab a cup of tea and put your feet up warm and cozy while I show you what I've done. Okay, let's get started. I'd use these four paints in the project, but for now I'll stand and only use sand, blood orange and toad hole. I'll get three pieces of smoothly heavy cardstock and I'll extend them with cut and dry foam. It's a foam that you can cut as you can see and instead of using the white part I'm going to use the back part. Here I started directly to apply the paint as it is. So I started with blood orange and the back of it. So as you can see well I'm spinning the video a lot and as you can see I'm getting well a lot of brush strokes and the color is very intense. Same with toad hole. If I do it this way I basically get a lot of brush strokes. I tried also with a brayer and with a brush and yet this um, I'm preparing here like a base for stamping so for me it was a bit too much so I went and tried a different technique that Mark and Leandra taught me in the past. I mixed some paint with the water and then it was very well extendable so I got a softer color yes but then it was perfect for stamping later so as you can see, if you just mix it with some water, you get a softer color. So I repeated the same with the other two paints on the other back of the card. So mix it with water and as you can see, you can spread it very well and you get a very soft and nice color, perfect for stamping. And also I did the same with the red on the back and same thing. And originally this one is a translucent paint okay so the color was very mild so I give it a second layer of watery paint and those are the three cards that I got and now it's time for stamping I'll use the bowl and the leaves from those two stamp sets and I'm going to stamp with VersaFine Clear which is a waterproof ink it's oil based and it dries very slowly so it also lets me room for use it as an embossing ink basically. So I'm stamping six of them and then I'm cutting them into pieces so I can basically add some embossing powder only on the top part of the ornament. So I'll do that with the six of them. The rest of the ink is very wet still because I'm stamping on a surface that it's non porous so it really takes a long time to dry. So I'm just well embossing it and then I'm heat setting also the rest of the ink on that paper so it really needs a lot of time to dry if you didn't want to emboss then you could use um, archival ink which is alcohol based basically and then that one dries very quickly and you wouldn't have the problem of smearing it or needing to heat set that it would basically dry very soon and then on the red part I'm stamping the other hanging using the same paint six times as well. I'm doing six just to have a spare one but I'll only need five as you will see. And same thing, I'm embossing the top part of it with some embossing powder. This is Wow embossing powder, the ray, rich, no, pale, super fine gold one. Well, I'll add it to the description of the video so you can have a look at everything that I'm using here. So I'm heat setting all. And then I'm also stamping in red that banner, the Merry Christmas and the ribbon twice. And then I'll go on the yellow and stamp all those jingle bells, again embossing them in gold. And I'll repeat the same and create the brown versions of it. At this point I wasn't sure if I wanted a lot of um, gold or a lot of brown, so I basically stamped everything that I wanted in the two colors so that will lend me room for um, manipulate and decide what's my final element that I actually used so I stamp everything in brown and then so two stars two frames as well 
and I only need two of each at the very end but then apart from stamping in brown I was also embossing in gold so then I could make my final decision at the very end but you will see that I couldn't pick <laughs> and I will mix gold and brown in different parts of the actual decorations so then I'm stamping the Merry Christmas in the middle of the frames and then I did a lot of cutting and after a lot of cutting it's time for adding some vintage touches and some shine Pearl Glaze by Pepper Artsy to add some shine mixed with Infusions Golden Sands and you can see that I get like a gold shiny paint <laughs> this is translucent and I'm adding it in some parts like the Merry Christmas there I'm mixing a bit more of that and then I'll add that to this uh, kind of um, cord of the hangies then with matte glaze and some golden sands as well I'm going to add some yellow to the hanging this is a translucent paint so I'm adding little by little this will change the color of the hanging but it will also give it a bit of texture so I'm adding there in the sides and then everywhere and then I'm applying a second and third layer of different strokes and as you can see well the vintage kind of is coming I'm also giving some vertical strokes to mimic those uh, shadings done while I actually draw the bow so yeah I'm following a little bit the same shadow uh, style that I did when I draw this design adding a bit more of that glaze with a pearl color and then I will mix Infusions Olive Tree also with the matte glaze to get that translucent paint and then I'll paint a bit darker in green the top and the bottom part so I'll do that with all the six elements that I actually stamped of this design and I'll show you the difference that I got just by adding those different touches on those infusions colors and that pearl it really changes so well you get a completely different hanging <laughs> and I'm adding a bit more of color here and there until I'm satisfied and you can see the difference between the two so I'm going to do the same thing there I tried first with a little bit of pearl grace on its own but then I decide to mix it with Sunset Beach Infusions which is a reddish one and I'm applying it in some of the parts of the hanging I'm leaving one part empty on because I'm going to put the yellow parts on there so it will be a red and yellow hanging and you can see the difference between the two of them and I did the same with the bells so yeah now it's time for decorating the leaves and for them I'm only painting the berries so um, the color that I'm using the red is translucent so I cannot paint directly the green because I will get brown then here's the trick you paint the berries first in white and I'm using cloud 9 paint this is a new paper RC paint very nice you need to have a look at all the palette they've come up with such gorgeous colors now and unified everything very very nice have a look at the latest releases so once the white is there I'm just making sure that I actually paint all the berries from the stamp set so I'm getting the stamp set by my side to have a look and see if I'm doing it right then with blood orange which again is translucent as I was saying I will just add that red color on top of the berries I was originally keeping a white spot in the middle for um, a reflection but then I decided what the hell I'm gonna add afterwards <laughs> the white if I need it back so I paint everything in red and now my berries start to be well more reddish like as they should with the holy branch so I'm painting all there and then I'll add just a little touch of white back to get that reflection so this is a technique that I've seen using um, Leandra a lot for a lot of stamping and I never dared to do that myself because well you know when you add paint on top especially if it's opaque you're basically covering the original uh, stamped image and then you need to be a bit brave on try to recover and mimic whatever was stamped before right but I think they turn out very nicely 
and yeah, I'm really satisfied with these berries. Just adding there the reflections and that's it. Now I'll work on the Christmas sentiment and I'll add some distressed crackle paint, the clear rock candy, because I want to add some crackles over there. I'm extending that paint with a brush and I'm being very light on the edges because I want small cracks there and then I'm being heavier in the middle because I want bigger cracks there. So that's how this paint works. If you add very little, your cracks will be very, very small and very close together and if you put far more paint on top then your cracks will be bigger and it will take a long while to dry. Here it, it says that you can speed up the process with a heat gun. I didn't do it this time, I just let it uh, sit overnight because I basically had to do other stuff and could work on other parts of my art journal anyway. So I let them aside and yeah I'm just adding in different parts. Um, in two different pieces, one in gold and one in brown, because as I said, I would um, mix the two together for on, and they will, this will hang from the bookmark and one side will be gold and the other side will be brown. And once everything is covered, I'll set them aside. Just a close up so you can see how much I put. Okay, very heavy in the middle. So now I'm going to crochet a chain. This is the way that I do it. I don't know if it's right or not, <laughs> but that's the first stitch. And then you just need to, well, get one and another one and so on. And that's how you build a chain or how I build it. <laughs> and I'm very bad with this. So if you want to learn crochet, don't learn it from me. Okay. And in the last one, I just do like that. I pull it through and then your chain is closed, right? So this is a small one and I will not bother you, but I created a longer version of it. This is how long I wanted it. So then it can go up and down and exceed my journal page. So yeah, after that is done, then I'm going to show you how the assemble thing will look like. So it will be a star, the sentiment and the a jingle bell. And I decided to add a little real jingle bell at the very bottom. So I added it like that and I did a little knot and then I hide that thread. Now I'm going to work on the background. I'm going to select that stencil and as you can see that's the design that I had in mind so I know where I want to place it basically behind those hangings. I'm going to use that crunch paste which is a texture paste by Paper Artsy which you know I always use. It's based on plaster and it's very good because you can heat set it and it will not blister. So you just basically stir it a little bit and then it's good to go. So I'm placing one there, then a little bit over there as well. I'm scratching out all the remaining of the texture based. So I get a clean, more or less <laughs> stencil version of it. And then I'm putting it there as well. And another one underneath the other cluster of hangings and if you're going to work on top of a previous stencil area you can always heat set in between if you want to make sure that you don't destroy anything but here I'm just well doing it quickly and carefully and it works for me and this paste can be colored if you want it, but I don't want to add any color at this point. I will just add color on top of it to the page. So I'm heat setting everything and then I can move on to the next bit, which is adding color. With cloud nine, I'm going to add some white and then I'm applying it with a sponge. You will see that I also use my fingers and I water it down a little bit. And well, any technique will work. You just need to extend the paint and I basically don't want any brush strokes in white. Well, uh, but then you'll see that I the next color that I apply on top, I want brush strokes. So I have that brush over there that I will use. So once more or less it's covered, then I mean, I can see still the letters from the book, but I want them to be a bit hidden. Then I'll use sand, which is one of the new colors by Paper Artsy. And I'm giving brush strokes up and down in some parts and then also left and right. 
so I'm just doing there the two pages and then I'll apply a third layer that's with golden sands infusions and some water and I'm applying it up and down as well getting brush strokes and then now instead of water I'm using pearl glaze which is again that varnish that is pearlescent and then I'm applying infusions on top of my surface and then loading the brush with the pearl glaze and giving some brush strokes up and down and then at some point I'll add a bit more and I'll do it also left and right that will give me kind of like a linen effect just because I have well up and down brush strokes and left and right so it seems like a fabric <laughs> thingy so Leandra taught us um, when we were in the make and take where infusions were introduced she showed us this technique with a regular matte glaze or the satin glaze I think it was and it looks very nice but pearl glaze it's also a very nice version for it because it gives you shine so the two pages are ready and I'm going to add a, another layer of infusions this one with water so just spritzing and let it run and then if I find that spots are too dark then I'll just use a bit of cloth to actually remove some of it and then heat set with the heat tool so that adds more interest I'm applying also a little bit there and then extending it with a brush so it's just a matter of adding interest and texture as I want um, as I and when you like it and once you're satisfied you just stop and you think it's done so for me I'm about to reach that point and I think my background is ready now I'll move on and create like a postcard I'm using VersaFine Claire again and that pine tree so I'm going to stop in twice I'm going to mask it and the second stamping will be a bit lower so then it will seem that there are two trees different in height one behind the other and then I'll stamp also that deer so that's the basic design and since I've used a waterproof ink you'll see that I'll be able to use some water-based medium on top to color this is the back of the card I'm using the frame and I'm creating a smaller frame there and I'm putting postcard so that's the back of the card back to the front I'm going to add the color so with infusions olive tree and matte glaze mixing it to create my paint I'm adding that color to the trees then same thing but with golden sands I'm adding that yellow to the deer and that, then those colors now became waterproof so they shouldn't uh, gain much more color so now I'm going to add a vintage touch with a water and infusions on top some water extra some splashes to make it vintage and grungy and I'll keep on adding more and more until I like the look and then I'll kind of work in the same way on the back of the postcard heat setting more water more drops until it's vintage enough so same for the back and once everything is ready and splashed enough then add, I'll add a final, final touch of vintage with vintage photo distress the regular one and I'm adding with a sponge dauber on the edges to make them darker so then your eye will focus on the center of the card it's like a frame same on the back and apart from that I thought that the front was a bit boring so I added another frame on the front of it the same one as in the back so I'm adding that kind of a postal frame there and then I'm also adding um, the postcard sign with the same ink and I'll hit the boss that in gold the postcard to add some more interest and so everything kind of comes together so I'm adding the powder just on top and then flipping very quickly the card so I just get the uh, gold embossing powder stick to the postcard I remove the excess with a brush and then I'll hit set and that becomes gold 
and my postcard is kind of ready. So now I'm going to assemble things. Here is the bookmark, the chain that I crocheted, that I'm fixing it with cell tape to the back of the cards, I mean to the back of the pages. These are the two pages that I will glue together in between two different art journals. <laughs> So I use them to hide stuff like these or stitches. And since these are book pages, it's better to stick them at least two by two. So they are stiffer and harder. So I'm putting every single piece there with a bit of cell tape. And I'll mount a gold on one side and a brown on the other. Same with the Merry Christmas. And same with the star. So once everything is glued with cell tape, then I'll fix the other sides with glue and I'm using Mod Podge. So one at a time, put glue, be patient, make sure that it sticks in place and hold it with your fingers. And the same for the Merry Christmas, which now it's crackled. You may see the cracks now. And then I'll do the same with the star. The star is kind of um, folded, so it's like a 3D hanging. I did a video in the past of, um, like I don't know, 16 of those stars. If you want to see it, I'll put a link so you can check it out on how I actually fold it to create a 3D embellishment. And then what well, you need to be patient to just assemble these two together. One of them is not um, has some flaps, so you can actually stick the two together. And you need to be patient and keep on adding glue and well make sure that you press until they are more or less glued and then you'll see that the hanging takes shape and it's perfectly in place okay so that's there my bookmark is ready you can flip it and now i'll work on the rest for the decorations i'm going to just poke a hole through that top part so I'm using three mini holes and then once the paper is a bit pierced, then I'll do a big hole. So I'm just doing like three little holes there and then I'm pushing through to make the big one. So I'm repeating that for, with all of them. For the ribbon, I mounted two together and then I put that piece of foam. So then I get a 3D shape. You'll see that I'll cut those little trims to create the banner a bit better and with more volume see that and this is how everything is put provisionally there so I'm just playing and see how I want it and those three branches will hide underneath the ribbon I'll cut and reshape them and now because well I'm putting some magnets with cell tape so I can put my postcard in place and I'll use those metallic corners that actually stick to the magnet so then my postcard will sit there and it can be lifted and removed if I want to or it can still be part of the art journal at a later stage so with some multimedia matte uh, glue which is my go-to glue for uh, these sort of metallic elements I'm just sticking those corners over there and once they are perfectly glued, well, the postcard will stick to that page and to that specific position because it's where the magnets are right now. And I did this because I basically liked the fact that I could write on the postcard and lift it and give it a bit of playfulness, right? <laughs> okay, now I'm using the same thread that I used for the chain to hang it from the hangings. So I'm just pulling the loop over there and I'll do that on all the hangings. Then with the clusters and the holes, I'm just sticking that down with some Mod Podge and I'm putting them in place. So now it's just a moment to assemble and add some more glue on the top. And I'm doing that with three of them. You need to be patient and basically press down so they stick good to the paper. And I'll take care of the threads later, which I'll hide them underneath I mean behind those pages you'll see so adding more glue where it needs to so they stay in place and then more glue on the top 
So now for the thread, I'm just pulling it backwards and securing it with cell tape on the back of that single leaf of the page. I'm cutting the excess of that hanging. And I'll secure all those over there and cut the excess. Those two pages will be stick together, so everything will be hidden. And, well, they will not move at all. And now final touch of Distress Crayon Vintage Photo to add some shadow behind all those cut leaves and also the hangings and everything. So I'm just putting it directly there and then with a wet brush, putting some water on my craft sheet and I'm extending that to create some sort of shadow. You can move it as much as you want and since we added the glue, you could even remove it completely if you didn't like it. And if you don't add any more water, it will not move. So, And also I'm applying it on the side to pick it and add it from my craft sheet onto the project. That gives me a bit of more, um, well, I think it's better for me doing it that way. Because the crayon is very, very thick, so I cannot specifically add the shadow where I want it. So this way I can control it better. And I think it adds a very nice touch because the fact of having those little shadows um, poking through behind each hanging, well, it seems that you're giving it more def depth. It's a small touch and you may not notice it, but really if you see the, the art journal in person, <laughs> you would notice that, yeah, that they look much better with this final touch than without anything. So I'm taking my time and just adding shadow here and there on all the pieces, whatever I think I need to. And once I'm satisfied, uh, the only pending thing will be to glue the pages together. So now I'm adding a lot of Mod Podge. You could use any other sort of glue that you have. It's just the Mod Podge that dries very quickly. And I don't know, it's my go-to glue for paper. So I just put them there. I'm leaving in purpose those hangings um, the green one on the left and the red one on the right to stand out from the actual Arjuna because I like them <laughs> and then yeah I'm sticking that part and this is done oh yeah I added a final touch of another metallic corner on that page just to add one more metallic element and that's it so this is the bookmark and you can see the two different sides and you can flip independently each part and this is the postcard that you can lift write anything behind put it back because the magnets will hold it and yeah that's it and this is ready to go it was very fun creating this i really enjoy it it took me a lot of time but i really really liked it how it turned out all the shadows you can see there all the pearl shining a lot and the different gold beads and so on so i think this is a vintage christmas um art journal so i think i accomplished the challenge <laughs> and i hope you like it so here are some close-up pictures so you can see what i finally did and how it turned out normally in pictures it looks nicer than the actual video <laughs> and you can see all the detail all that glaze how it's shining on the different parts and all the shadow that i added the cracks from the sentiments and everything. Well, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, I would love to see you there and respond to your comments. I always try to respond as soon as I can, but well, it may take me a while. <laughs> but thanks very much for watching and I really appreciate you stopping by and having a look at it. I'm adding a link description with all the supplies that I used in the description of the video so you can um, know more about the products that I used but if by any chance I miss something just ask me in the comments and I'll reply as soon as possible I'll leave you with a couple of videos at the very end so you can watch other art journals that I've created and also another video with the same sort of stamps that I used in the past in case you want to check it out so thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye